Hi, my name is Stephanie Bishop. I'm with the Division of Forestry. I'm just going to give you an update on the fire today. Currently, we're at 25.25 acres, holding a perimeter of a 30% containment. Our hose lay will remain around the perimeter as it has all evening, and our crew is confident that we can hold that perimeter by doing some more saw line work today, which is going to be our priority. What saw line work means is that we are just going to be swathing through the vegetation that is around the perimeter, and this is in prevention of allowing that fire to expand the or jump the current perimeter that we have. We would like to emphasize the importance and understanding that the trails of this area are closed at this time, and that's not just for the safety of our firefighters, but also the safety of the public. Our firefighters are focused on fighting the fire, and if the public is entering the area, that focus goes away from the, their fight and their work, and it will become a hazard. We currently do not have a cause of the fire that is still under investigation at this time. Uh, the state of Alaska is in a hot and dry area. We are in a high fire season danger. So please take the time this weekend just to create defensible space around your home in prevention of any type of wildfires. Be careful not to do anything that could cause any type of wildfires this area. We are spread thin on our, our resources and we would like to keep what we currently have working. Thank you. Hello, my name is Mike Davidson. I'm a battalion chief for the Anchorage Fire Department. <clears throat> the Anchorage Fire Department is uh, currently supporting Division of Forestry Operations here at the Martin Luther King Fire, the MLK Fire. <clears throat> the Division of Forestry has assumed uh, command of the incident here and has their wildland firefighters here working to contain the incident. And the Anchorage Fire Department is standing in support of those operations. Uh, as well, the Anchorage Fire Department continues to provide fire protection for the remainder of the municipality. We want to remind the public that uh, we're in a period of quite high fire danger. There is a burn ban issued for the entire municipality. So there is no open burning in the municipality of Anchorage. There are no fireworks allowed in the municipality of Anchorage. There's no burning, including in commercially made fire containers. Uh, barbecues and pellet grills are still approved for use in the municipality of Anchorage, but we want to remind the public to be quite careful with any heat generating source outdoors as we enter into the July 4th weekend. Again, we're counting on the citizens and residents of Anchorage to help us during this time so that we uh, don't have any additional fires start in the Anchorage area. Good morning, I'm uh, David Burns, I'm Sergeant from the Anchorage Police Department from the Patrol Division. Uh, APD has been here since uh, the beginning assisting both the fire department here in Anchorage and also the Division of Forestry. Right now we have a presence both on uh, for traffic control on Elmore Road and we also have uh, school resource officers on bicycles that are on the trails itself. Uh, the trails, uh, I'd like to reiterate, are closed. Uh, we need the public's help with that uh, for their safety and also to let the firemen do their work. The trails in particular are in the Camel Creek Belt area mainly off of entry points off of MLK, or Martin Luther King and Elmore, um, off of Lake Otis near the Camel Creek Park actual entrance there, and also off of uh, Folker and uh, Rum. Do you have a point of origin yet, where it started? No, currently it's still under investigation. We have no further information regarding so you said we're 30 percent contained what what part is contained and what part is not yet so the the containment is what is inside our perimeter and that's what we are holding at is that um inside that perimeter our our priority is to not go outside of that perimeter and allow it to spread any further it's to keep it in that perimeter and fight it down um, so that we can get up to full containment is there a timeline for when the fire will be fully contained we do not have a, an exact time no we'll be working on it throughout the day though how active is the fire within the containment area? Currently, it's pretty much pretty just smoldering. They're working on it. And uh, the, the main thing is um, breaking down any other fuel resources that they have outside the perimeter to prevent it from spreading. What's the process of trying to find out the cause? Uh, we have fire investigators that walk, will walk the perimeter, and um, they're highly trained, and they, do, uh, they walk through it and will kind of get down into like the area that they believe it came from. Earlier you had said, or someone had said that two separate reports came in on the fire at different locations. Could that be an indication that it might be arson? I did not say that. Okay. Uh, I think that was earlier. Uh, yeah, yeah, so I, I don't have any information on that, okay. sorry. Um, would it be safe to say that it's in a mop-up phase at the moment for forestry? Uh, we're currently working towards that phase. We are not in that phase yet. How many people are on this fire right now? We currently have 66 active crew members. And who, where are those crews from? 
Uh, currently, the crews that we have are a hotshot crew out of Oregon. Uh, we do have uh, two crews out of the Matsu Valley area, as well as Gannett Glacier crew. How are resources these days with the Swan Lake fire, this fire, and other fires burning here in the lower 48? So our resources are holding strong here as much as we can. We want to prevent any further fires, though. But we have access to resources in the lower 48 that will come up and help us. And we do want to reiterate that we thank highly um, the uh, National Guard yesterday for the allowance of their Blackhawks, as well as the Palmer Hell Attack, who came up immediately and was able, able to uh, get some water and retardant dropped on the fire immediately as well as the Sasquatch um, tanker, or I'm sorry, Sasquatch one tanker, and the Conair tanker who came up immediately. I mean, if it wasn't for the resources of other countries that are eligible to come in, as well as lower states to come up and help us, we couldn't get the containment as quick as we possibly want to. Were there any injuries at all to firefighters or people or anyone? At this time, there's been no injuries reported. How about anything burned at all, structures-wise? Uh, that has not been reported either. What's the lesson that you've learned from this fire? The response was so quick. Uh, what was achieved quite quickly? What, what, what's the possible lesson? I, I can tell you the lesson I have learned is that we have a tight um, working community within our first responders and that we all communicate well together and we're able to communicate what we see and what we visually knew so we can get the proper resources there immediately. Even though this, you attacked it quickly, it started quickly, it started to spread. Is there does that keep you up at night knowing we're heading into July 4th and people are still going to set off fireworks, illegal or not? Well, the main fuel source is the black spruce, which has been a talk, a topic uh, for the last few weeks of talking. So, I mean, if people can do that defensible space around their house, that helps prevent a lot of spreading. That helps prevent a lot of the wildfire. Were there a lot of spruce trees that had bark beetle kill out there that burned? Um, I do not know that, but I do know there is some black spruce um, out there as uh, some of their fuel source. I have not been years. told that, so I cannot comment on that. Do you know how unusual it is for a fire this large to happen in the Anchorage limits? I, I don't. I mean, I know that we have responded out here for fires before, so I, I mean, it's this we're in a really high fire season right now. It's a lot drier than Anchorage or Alaska is used to, and our, we're just going to get hotter as the weekend goes in. Okay, one more. Could I ask a question of the APD? Um, could you clarify, we heard the fireworks are banned for July 4th. Could you clarify the penalties that people face if they do set a fire, if they accidentally start a fire by light, by breaking the burn ban? So the uh, penalty for having fireworks is a, it's an infraction. Uh, so obviously we'll be taking the fireworks and uh, confiscating them and issue a citation for, for that. If it starts a fire, that's a little bit different uh, type of a scenario. Also, a little bit longer of investigation to link the fireworks to the actual uh, fire that, that happened, and we'll be partnering up with the AFD if that happens. But will you be actively looking for people who might break the burn ban, might put homes people at risk? Now, we'll have some extra officers uh, out this weekend, particularly because it is so warm and it is so dry. Um, but we'll be managing you know, the calls for service as well as all the activity with the 4th of July at the same time. If someone's. Oh, go ahead. Are you aware of any homeless camps that are in? Uh, we do have some homeless camps, yes, back in the area, in that wooded area. We do. Is any any people are wondering if that was the case? Do you, do you know if that's a possibility, or are you looking into that? Are you talking about the start? Uh, home, homeless camps, and if, if that could have been responsible for any of this? Uh, we won't know that until a later time when uh, we determine the origin of the fire. And last question: yeah, If someone starts a fire, are they res are they responsible for the cost of fighting it, and maybe if a home burns? I don't have the answer to that question. I don't know. Okay. Okay. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. Thank Thanks for helping to get the word out before the weekend for yes. us. Yes, yes thank, thank you. you. Yep, let's run over there. I'll get their names on camera. Yeah. I need to. Okay.